Another way to control the amount of data to be printed on a page, besides working with your page orientation or margins, are inserting page breaks. And to view them, to insert them, remove them, just come up here, click on the View tab, go to the Workbook Views group, and the view that we're currently in, the default view is normal, but we want to go to Page Break Preview. Click on it, and there you go. Wherever you see a dashed line, the vertical and horizontal, those are page breaks. And you can see the watermark, that's page 1, everything that's going to be printed on page 1, then down below page 2, and then it goes up and over to the right with page 3, and you can't see the watermark because the area is smaller, so is the watermark, and then down to page 4. So what it's saying is that it can squeeze these many columns onto the first page, and the others that it can't will have to wait until after it takes care and addresses the first several columns. So when it goes to the next page, a continuation of the data for those columns, and it finishes it off, then it'll go ahead and go to the cutoff columns and put that on a page after it finishes with these, which is going to be page 3, and then work with that until it goes down to page 4 and it finishes those two last columns. Now you can work with your page breaks here if you want to move them around. For example, I want more space on page 1 than page 2. So in this example, you can see that it breaks right below number 46, Lance Boyle. If I want to break it above it, then go ahead and hover over the horizontal page break until you can see arrows pointing up and down. Click and drag it and move it above, and then it converts from a dashed line to a solid line. The dashed lines are the default page breaks for Excel. When I manipulate it and turns it to a solid, that means it's a page break that I modified. So I can tell the difference between the two. And that will come into play in just a minute. But right now, we now have Lance Boyle at the top of page 2 and not at the bottom of page 1. You want to verify that besides what you see in here? OK. Go ahead and click on the File tab. Go backstage down to Print. Go over to the Print Preview and down at the bottom, number 46 isn't there. It's number 45, Kyle Purple. So if I go over to page 2 up at the top, there you go, 46, Lance Boyle. Okay, maybe you can't see it. Let's go ahead and click on it to zoom in. There we go, Lance Boyle. So let's go ahead and go back. And let's talk about removing page breaks before we go into inserting them. And to remove them, you can do it one of a couple of ways. If it's a default page break, one that Excel has set up, then the only way to remove it is by hovering over it until you can see arrows pointing in opposite directions and then you can click and drag it all the way over to the right until it disappears. But the problem with that, let me come up here and click on the Page Layout tab, go to the Scale Fit group, is that it shrinks the font so it can fit everything, as you can see, onto one page by not cutting off the last two columns, as we saw before we removed that vertical page break. So now the data is 81% of its original size. It's a lot smaller. And then another way to remove a page break if it's one that you modified or manipulated or inserted, if it's a solid line, is instead of clicking and dragging it off, is that you can actually click below that line if it's horizontal or to the right of it if it's vertical. So since it's horizontal, and instead of clicking and dragging it off, you can come up here, click on the Page Layout tab, go to the Page Setup group, click on Breaks, and select Remove. Now when you do that, it adjusts it here, and it goes to the default that Excel has set up to adjust to the Scale to Fit 81%. So it didn't remove it completely, it just removed your modification of it when we moved it up one to put Lance Boyle at the top of page two. So if I want to remove Excel's page break, the one that's dashed, I can't do it this way by clicking below it and coming up here and clicking on breaks to remove it. It won't work. I have to click and drag it off completely in order for it to accept it. But if it's a solid line, one again that I modified or inserted, then I can go ahead and use it. But for me, it's just easier to click and drag than to come up here and click on it once to go down to remove it. Okay, so right now, to fit everything, it looks like onto one page, the font is shrunk down to 70% of normal size. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like before we print it off by going to the Print Preview, click on File, go down to Print, and then go ahead and click to zoom in. Ugh, that was zoomed in. Ugh. Let's go ahead and click on it to zoom in and Ooh, that's pretty tiny. Going to need a magnifying glass to be able to read that. I mean, it's somewhat legible here, but I don't like squinting to that size of font. So if you want to go ahead and change it back, you can do it within the print preview. There it is, custom scaling. Click on it, go down to custom scaling options. Opens up the page setup window, which by the way, you can close out of that and just click on page setup. Opens up the same window, and on the page tab, you can see that it's been adjusted to 70% of normal size. In here, you can go ahead and type in 100 to get it back up to normal size and click okie dokie, in which case 
it adds the page breaks because it can't fit everything onto one page at that size. So instead of page one, we can go to page two, page three, in any case. Let's go back to our page break preview, and you can see we're back to where we started with the Excel page breaks that it put in, the horizontal and vertical with our quadrants one, two, three, and four, representing the different pages. Now let's go ahead and change the orientation up here in the page setup group from portrait to landscape. And because we have more width, in our pages it fits all the columns and the only breaks we get is well just below James Dean so we have less space vertically but more space horizontally and it can print out on two pages now now let's say that I want to go ahead and adjust this so I have maybe on page one that amount of data page two here and then add another page break to have a third page for this amount of data so to do this I can go ahead and click and drag that up and insert another page break but you want to keep in mind that to insert a page break, if you want to insert one right there horizontally, that whatever cell you have selected, that when you insert it, it's going to insert a break above and to the left of it. So that means it's going to insert both a horizontal and a vertical break. To make sure you don't insert a vertical break, if you just want a horizontal one, then you want to go over to the far left-hand column. So when you insert it, it inserts it above it, but is there anywhere it can go to the left-hand side? No, because there's not a column, so that's how you get your horizontal without getting a vertical. For example, let me go ahead and select the cell right here and come up on the Page Layout tab, Page Setup Group, Breaks to Insert Page Break, and ooh, that's pretty crazy, see? It inserted a break above and to the left, my horizontal and vertical page breaks of that cell that I had selected. So let's go ahead and undo that, and click and drag that guy up, and then come down here and insert a break, a horizontal break, so i got to be in the leftmost cell, or the first column to insert a horizontal break and come up here breaks to insert page break and cool and then if I want to go ahead and insert a vertical break you want to come up here where I don't want to insert a vertical and a horizontal break then you want to be in the topmost cell but the problem with that is that well you see that's a merged cell and so I can't like if I want to insert a vertical break in cell H1 so it's just to the left of it because if I come down here and select that cell, it'll be to the left of it, but above it will be inserted horizontal. Again, whatever cell you have selected, it inserts one to the left and above it. And I don't want one above, so I go to the topmost cell. So let's go ahead and right-click on the cell, go down to Format Cells, to the Alignment tab, and remove Merge Cells, and click Okie Dokie. And oh, the alignment for A1 is now centered. Let's go to the Home tab and say we want to align it to the left so I can see the name Dreamforce. And then I can go ahead and select cell H1 and then come back up here to the page layout tab to breaks to insert a page break and it inserts a break to the left and above the cell but because there's nothing above it because I'm already in the first row it just adds a break over to the left hand side of it. Now not only can you insert and remove page breaks in the page break preview you can also do it in the normal view but I prefer it here because you can really tell where the page breaks are. So to do that just come up here click on the view tab Go to the workbook views group and change it from page break to normal. And in fact, you can see that break coming down in between columns G and H. All I have to do is go ahead and click on the right hand side of the vertical break and then come up here, click on the page layout tab, go to the page setup group, click on breaks and remove it and it's gone. But over here we get the dashed line. The solid line there was my page break that I worked with that I inserted or manipulated. For example, that dashed line, when I go back to the page break preview, is going to be Excel's way of saying, okay, in page orientation, you can fit a few more columns. But if I click and drag that out and manipulate its default, it'll turn from a dashed line to a solid line. So in other words, you can tell the difference between your page breaks and Excel's. Excel's are dashed. Your page breaks are going to be a solid line. And then by the same token, you can also insert a page break. Again, you want to be mindful of what cell you have selected because it'll insert a break above and to the left of the cell. So both a horizontal and a vertical, unless, of course, you get right up and hug the top row to insert just a vertical or hug the leftmost column to insert just a horizontal. So if I come over here and say breaks to insert page break, I don't know if you can see it, but I've got a break, a vertical one right here to the left of it and above it right there, the horizontal. So let's go ahead and undo that or remove it and then go up at the top so we can just insert a page break, a vertical one to the left of the cell by breaks to insert page breaks and I just get the vertical one because there's nothing above that cell so there's no horizontal. Ooh, This is going to be fun. Let's go ahead and take a look. File down to print. Preview. Let me click on it to zoom out. There's page one, two, three, and four. 
5, and 6. Well, nonetheless, you get the point. Now, with all those page breaks that I added, if you want extra space for those pages, maybe when you print them off, you can analyze some data like on page 2. Then you can have in your meeting people make comments below here. But make sure if you don't see the labels for each of your columns, the titles, or for your rows, you can watch my print titles training video. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.